Honourable Member for Scarborough Southwest. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And to hear the, the last member just say that, you know, the, their government consistently brought in the balanced budgets before and after the recession. I mean, that's that kind of remarks almost as dumb as saying budgets balance themselves, Mr. Speaker. Now, <clears throat> j'aimerais uh, partager mon temps, Mr. I'd like to share my time, Mr. Speaker, with the member for Charlebourg, au Saint Charles. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm thrilled to get an opportunity to speak on this very important issue affecting nearly all Canadians and the majority of my constituents in Scarborough Southwest. After 10 years of Conservative rule and 13 years of the Liberals before them, families back home are struggling to make ends meet. These pay, -to pay fees hit vulnerable people the hardest – seniors, people living with disabilities, new Canadians, and anyone who can't do online banking. Now, the notion of charging someone money just to be able to pay their bills is absurd. But then again, so is charging someone $4.50 to withdraw $40 from the bank, as in the case brought up by my colleague from Davenport, which is just simply insane. That worked out to a fee of 11% just for that individual to be able to withdraw their own money. Now bank fees hit those with modest incomes even harder because they're forced by circumstances often to make a larger number of small dollar withdrawals. It's like a tax on being poor because the bank isn't going to make more money from them on mortgages, investments, loans, so they gouge them with these usury fees. Now going back to online banking, Statistics Canada reports that 20% of homes in Canada have no internet, and that number rises to 46% of households with incomes below 30 percent. Now this should make it clear, Mr. Speaker, that these fees hit those who can least afford it the most. The big five banks make around a half a billion dollar a year profit off ATM fees. They're now making almost 180 million dollars each year on pay-to-pay -pay fees. Now how long before those numbers rise to a billion dollars just for Canadians to be able to access their own money and to pay their own bills. Now, <clears throat> moving on to the Conservatives' uh, famed voluntary code of conduct and why we need to change it to a mandatory one and make it stricter, frankly. Last year, of course, the government introduced changes to force the banks to offer more free and low-cost accounts. Now, these accounts, Mr. Speaker, come with a very limited number of debits per month. So the banks, of course, to get around this, are now starting to include things like bank transfers, bill payments, student loan payments, credit card payments, into the number of debits so that it will jack up the number of debits that each individual is going to make. So those people, a lot of them, with those low cost or those no-fee accounts, with you know, only seven or eight debits allowed per month, are going to end up getting hit with even larger fees for going over the number of allowed uh, debits, Mr. Speaker, which means they'll have to change what type of account they have and pay more for it just to be able to get more debits so that they, in fact, reduce the cost per transaction. Uh, now, Mr. Speaker, this is why we'd actually need to move to mandatory code of conduct with stricter rules, because every time we put in something, or we, I say we as in Parliament, but I really mean the Conservatives, bring in these voluntary codes of conduct, uh, it's really just a suggestion to the banks. And then what they're going to do, because they're always going to make sure that they make whatever bottom line that they want to make, uh, and we just have to look at the first two quarters of this year, Mr. Speaker, where the banks in Canada have turned $15 billion in profit, uh, they're going to find ways to, to sneak around. Uh, the different changes that are made if they're only voluntary. We need to make them mandatory and we need to make them stricter, Mr. Speaker. Now, <clears throat> there's also, of course, lots of other things, you know, they keep talking about, uh, like the last member, talking about uh, how they keep trying to do things to uh, save people money and to help businesses, uh, Mr. Speaker. But nowhere in the last 10 years has this government moved to address one of the most ridiculous uh, merchant fees that exists, which is... You have a small business, let's say it's a, a restaurant, Mr. Speaker, and you of course accept credit cards because a lot of people are using those credit cards nowadays. Uh, and that person who goes and pays their bill then goes and of course puts the tip 
onto the bill, Mr. Speaker. So, you know, let's say it's 30 bucks and then they put a, a, a generous $4 tip on there. So, of course, that merchant's going to be paying, depending on the card used, anywhere from, you know, two and a half to potentially up to 6% uh, in merchant fees on that transaction for $34. And of course, in places like Ontario, where it's required by law for the employers to remit the tips back to their employees, and that's exactly how it should be, that business is then paying a merchant fee on that $4 tip that they have to remove, give to the employees. So they, in fact, are giving that $4, but it's really costing them 4 to $5, Mr. Speaker, because they have to pay that merchant fee on it as, as well. And nowhere has this government ever suggested that we should actually remove this fee, despite suggestions from the opposition. And that would be a tangible measure that would help a lot of small businesses, Mr. Speaker, uh, to make ends meet. Now, the banks are always a, a pleasure and a joy to deal with, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I was talking to my bank today, actually, while I was writing this speech. It worked out pretty well. Uh, because I noticed that all of a sudden I'm getting hit with more fees and I called them up to see what was happening and why that was. Uh, it took me 35 minutes uh, on the phone, uh, which of course most Canadians don't have that kind of time to waste. Uh, and uh, I was sitting there typing uh, up my speech and uh, writing it at that time, so I was uh, doing two things and uh, talked to them about what was going on. And sure enough, they've raised the minimum thresholds on my accounts uh, in order to not pay those monthly fees. And I asked them, well, when did you inform me about this? Oh, well, we sent you a letter. Mm, no, they didn't. Oh, well, you should see a, a message in your, uh, your online banking uh, inbox. No, nope, wasn't a message there. Uh, so, of course, Mr. Speaker, this is again where if the banks aren't required to do something and properly inform consumers about what's going on, uh, then consumers then have to go and waste their time and energy and effort just to get fees back that should have never been charged to them in the first place, Mr. Speaker. And of course, all of us in this chamber, uh, we're all blessed, frankly, with uh, very high salaries compared to average Canadians, and we should be able to, in many cases, be able to keep minimum balances in the bank accounts to avoid those fees. But most Canadians can't do that, Mr. Speaker. Most Canadians wouldn't be able to find another thousand dollars all of a sudden to put into different bank accounts in order to not get dinged with these fees. And of course then you could end up losing another twenty or thirty dollars a month, Mr. Speaker. And a single parent in my riding with two children in childcare which is prohibitively expensive and neither of the other part, two parties are going to do anything about that. You know, they want to put a little bit of money back into people's pockets while they continue to pay fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year in childcare fees. Okay, well, you, you know, give $5,000, but then you put, fork out 20. Well, you're at 15, Mr. Speaker. That's not more money in your pocket. That's more money out of your pocket. Whereas the NDP is planning to create $15 a day childcare, will make the total childcare costs for those families five to $6,000 a year, which means, guess what? Families will end up with ten dollars to $15,000 back in their pockets, Mr. Speaker. That's how we make a more prosperous Canada. That's how we make a more equal Canada. And it's also by getting rid of ridiculous pay-to-pay -pay fees. Now, the government, I've heard several members talk about how, you know, we brought it up in the speech from the throne in 2013. Yeah, they did, only after the NDP had been hammering on them for over a year. But, you know, there was no equivocation in the speech from the throne. They didn't say we're going to do it in this industry and not in this sector. But then when they actually come up uh, with the rules, they excluded the banks. And we asked them, why are you excluding the banks? They said, well, we're excluding the banks because they're not charging those fees right now. Well, all of a sudden, they are now charging those fees. Why? Because they're allowed to. They're going to do whatever the market can bear, and they're going to try to maximize their profits in every single instance. Now, I am thrilled to see that the government's actually going to support the motion. Uh, it's really good. I mean, they're supporting a lot of these our motions these days. Must mean we must be ready to govern or something. But the question remains, will they actually implement the changes? Now, we heard with the feminine hygiene products, Mr. Speaker, there was a unanimous vote in the House, uh, and uh, the government is going to put that in on July 1st. But will they bring this change in for July 1st? Will they bring this in to a piece of legislation or accept an amendment to the Budget Implementation Act to put it in. 
Mr. Speaker, that question remains. So, of course, supporting the motion is all fine and good, but it's the action required afterwards that matters. Thank you. Uh, questions and comments? Question and comment. L'Honorable Deputy. And Honourable Member for Abitibi, Tennis Gamang. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to know if, in his writing, it could certainly be of concern that some people are having mental health problems that are less at ease having to deal with banking service issues and now they'll be obliged by the government to deal with a bank in order to receive the allowances for those who do receive any such thing and at the same time they'll have to pay to pay. So does he find that it's really ostracizing a population that is more hesitant to deal with banks and such institutions and with uh, computer systems where their data will be contacted, particularly those who are paranoid. Uh, it's certainly a challenge for a person with mental health issues. Uh, they don't need that at all, but it's not just them. Studies have shown that over 40% of Canadians are not comfortable doing online banking. And one of the reasons for that is uh, that online security is something that's always very important and troubling to many people. So when I knock on doors, I always find people who don't want to sign something, who don't want to go and check something online because they're afraid that someone will take their information and use it in a wrong way. It's a question and comment. Uh, the Honourable Member for Surrey North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've, I've listened to the speech very carefully the last uh, uh, number of minutes. Mr. Speaker, you know, when it comes to facts, that's not something that the Conservatives really, uh, you know, want to discuss. And then one of the things that the, the Member was talking about earlier on, he was talking about how uh, the Conservatives want to put money back in the pockets of the Canadians. In, in this case, they're actually taking money out of the pockets of Canadians and giving it to their friends, the big banks. So that's a lot of money, $180 million a year that they're taking out of the pockets of Canadians, giving it to their friends, and, uh, uh, and helping them uh, steal from Canadians, Mr. Speaker. So my question for my colleagues is, is what would an NDP government do after October 19th? Uh, the Honourable Member Scarborough Southwest. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you for that question. Um, absolutely. I mean, you, you hear the other parties talk about uh, putting money back into people's pockets. We'd rather leave it there in the first place, Mr. Speaker, by bringing in good quality, affordable childcare at a maximum of $15 a day. They will actually drastically lower the cost of childcare for families who need it. That leaves the money in their pocket. By ending pay-to-pay -pay fees, Mr. Speaker, and by putting a cap on ATM fees, for example, we are then leaving money in Canadians' pockets rather than taking it out and then putting it back. We see with the, the federal government right now, with the Conservatives and their income splitting plan, they're going to take $2.5 billion of people's money and put it into the top 15% of income earners, Mr. Speaker, the people who frankly don't need any help. Uh, and of course, the Liberal policy, I mean, it, it changes here and there uh, day to day. Uh, it's kind of like a moving target that way. Uh, but certainly it's not going to be the kind of policy like ours that is actually going to reduce costs for Canadians, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and a good quality, affordable childcare is the number one thing that we can do for families to help them make ends meet. 